All right. This video, we're going to um, expand on what we did the other day in class where we did the mole to mole conversions. We're going to expand that to include mole to mass and mass to mass stoichiometric problems. Okay, this little chart down here shows the three conversions that we use. We always use the, the one in the middle, the mole ratio convert, uh, conversion, where we have the we get that conversion from the balanced chemical equation. Okay, so we're always going to use this ratio, this conversion in our stoichiometric equations. Okay, sometimes we will have to use the conversions on either end. I'm going to go over those, how to use those in the video today. Okay, so the first conversion over here, if they give us grams of whatever we're working with, and say they gave us 20 grams of sodium, we'd have to convert that to moles. Okay, so we know how to do that. We one mole of sodium weighs, whatever weighs, do that conversion, convert it to the moles of our known product. Okay, then we do our mole to mole conversion to figure out how many moles of whatever it is we're trying to figure out. So we do that conversion. And then if we want the answer in grams, we have to do one more conversion to convert the moles that we got from doing this mole to mole e conversion from the balanced equation, we're going to change that back to grams, okay? So we, a lot of the problems we have in chemistry start out with grams, and they want to end in grams, okay? So you're going to have to do three conversions. But the conversions on the, at the beginning and the end are ones we've done in practice, the grams to moles and the moles to grams, okay? So we should that should be in your brain, in your skill set that to how if you give you grams of something you can convert it to moles if I give you moles of something you can convert it to grams so these two at the end are stuff we already know how to do the one in the middle comes from the balanced chemical equation and it's not that difficult okay here's the four steps okay so you need to write a balanced chemical equation sometimes they give this to you and step one is done determine the number of moles of the known substance Sometimes they give you the number of moles. You start out with moles. So if that's the case, then you're done. If that's not the case, if they give you grams, then you have to change the mass, the grams to moles. Okay, so we know how to do that, no problem. The middle step, the mole to mole. We do that, we figure out that from the balanced chemical equation. How many moles of whatever thing we're, we have to get the moles of the substance we're trying to find. Okay, we get that from the balanced chemical equation. The last step, if they want the answer in moles, then we're done. But if they want the answer in mass, how many grams of whatever product or where they're asking you to find, if they want the answer in grams, then we have to do moles to grams. Okay, it's balanced chemical equation, grams to moles, moles to moles from the balanced chemical equation, and then moles to grams at the end. Okay, those are the four steps. Okay, so this first example we have is going to change this ammonia into ammonia oxide and water. Okay, um, they helped us out a little bit here by giving us the the formulas for what's involved, the, the ammonia, the oxygen, the nitric oxide, and the water, but they left it unbalanced, so we're going to have to fix that sometime. And they told us that the reaction is run using um, 824 grams of ammonia. So we have 824 grams of NH3, and we've got plenty of oxygen, excess oxygen. In this problem, they're asking for moles of NO and moles of H2O. Okay, so our answers are both going to be in moles on this one. Okay, so here's the steps to solve that. Okay, so we have the unbalanced equation like this. First of all, you have to balance it. Okay, so I doubt when you balance it you just can click on the screen it'll pop up like that but hey it does for me so i'm going to go with it this is the balanced chemical equation for this reaction okay so what do we we start out we have to do this conversions here and i've left room to do two conversions okay because i know i'm going to have to change these grams into moles and i what do I, this is what i start out with 824 grams of ammonia what do I want to end up with? I want to end up with moles of NO. Okay, so what I start with and what I want to end up with, I put those at opposite ends of my little bar chart here, my little bridge, we'll call it. The bridge from grams of ammonia to moles of NO. Okay, so the first step here is to figure out in one mole of NH3, we have 17, a little over 17 grams of ammonia. Okay, so this is our grams to moles. The grams are going to cancel out 
and we're going to give moles. Okay, that's the first conversion because they gave us grams. In the second conversion, we're doing the mole to mole conversion that we get from the balanced chemical equation. So what do we want to put on the bottom? We want to put on the bottom from the chemical equation the moles of NH3. So there were four moles of NH3, so I'm going to put that on the bottom. How many moles of NO did that? Were there in this balanced chemical equation? I put that right on top. Four moles of NO. Okay, so everything cancels out here. Right. Oops, didn't get my pen like I wanted. There we go. So the grams cancel there. I end up with moles of NH3. Okay, so now I'm going to change the moles of NH3 to moles of NO. So that cancels. And we can see that this conversion factor is pretty easy, right? That the 4 moles to 4 moles, we're not going to have to do any extra work. So when we do the A24 divided by the 17, we get our answer over there. Okay, so we, we did this one in class today. When the moles are the same, there's no extra conversion to do, right? Really, there's not. Okay, so A24 divided by 17 gives me 48.4 moles of NO. So that's what they asked for. That's what we're done. If they wanted grams of NO, then we'd have to change these moles to grams. But they didn't, so we're not all done. Second part, how many moles of water are formed? So we start out the same way. I start out with grams here. We want to figure out moles of water. We do the same conversion here to change the grams of, of ammonia to moles. Okay, But in the middle here, we put this 4 moles of NH3 on the bottom. But from the chemical equation, we're going to put a six moles of water. Okay, so four moles of NH3 form six moles of water. Okay, so we're looking at all our cancellations here on our units. So we've got the grams cancel out here, the moles, and I should have put NH3 here cancels out, and we end up with moles of water. Okay, so how many moles of water do we do? Okay, A24 divided by 17. Then we got multiply by 6 and divide by 4. So that's the way I usually do it. Okay, so the top one divided by the bottom one times the top one divided by the bottom one. You can multiply A24 times 6, and if you divide by 17, you got to divide again by 4. I kind of go back and forth because sometimes if you divide by 17 times 4, it mess it up on your calculator. So do 824 divided by 17 times divided, and it should come up with 72.5. So work this on your calculator. Make sure you pause the video. Make sure you get the same thing here. Make sure you know how to do this. Okay. Okay. Last example here. We've got tin fluoride is used in some toothpaste, and it's made by this reaction. Tin and hydrogen fluoride combined to form tin fluoride and hydrogen gas. And this problem is asking how many grams of tin fluoride are produced when we start out with 30 grams of hydrogen fluoride. Okay, so this is a grams to grams conversion. Now you can see here I have enough space for three conversions here. I start off with my grams over here and I end up with my grams over here. Okay, so I end up with three conversion places for three conversions. My first conversion is to change these grams to moles. Okay, so one mole of hydrogen fluoride weighs 20.01 grams. Okay, so that's my grams to moles conversion. Now I'm up here at the top. I have one I have moles of hydrogen fluoride. Do I have more than one mole? Yeah, I should have like about one and a half moles when I do this. In the middle is my mole to mole from the balanced equation. So I put the hydrogen fluoride. I put it's got from the balanced equation, it's got a 2 here, 2 moles of hydrogen fluoride go on the bottom. What goes on the top? Well, what I'm trying to find, the, the tin fluoride. The tin fluoride, there's no number by it, so I know that means there's a 1 there, so 1 mole of tin fluoride. Okay, so now I've got grams to moles, moles to moles, I'm up to, I have moles of tin fluoride. But now I need to change those moles of tin fluoride to grams. Okay, so one mole of tin fluoride, add all those up, it weighs 156.71 grams. Okay, so I'm going to go through here. Oops, not with the crayons, I want the pen. Okay, so my grams cancel out, up to moles of hydrogen fluoride. 
I'm going to cancel out the moles of hydrogen fluoride, get moles of tin. I'm going to cancel out the moles of tin and end up with grams of tin. Okay, so the multiplying on this. Try this with your calculator. You do 30 divided by 20.01. And you can, don't have to multiply by 1. Divide by 2 times 256. And we don't have to divide by 1 again. You should get this number over here. Alternately, you could go 30 times 156.71 divided by 20 and then divided by 2. you got to divide separately by everything that's on the bottom here. If you go divided by 20 times 2, you'll get the wrong answer. Your calculator will do exactly what you say, but that's not what you want to do. Okay, so try these. These examples of problems will all be similar to this. The setup's the same. Make sure you set up all the conversions. When you're doing this, try, don't take any shortcuts. Set up all the conversions and you'll be successful in this grams to grams conversion. Especially at first, when you're trying to figure out how they work, do all the conversions just like this. Set it up, do it, and you'll be successful. It actually save time and you'll get the right answer. All right? So answer the questions on the form below and I'll see you in class tomorrow.